My name is Simon Van Boy, uh, and I'm from Great Britain. I grew up in Wales, and I live in New York. Um, I uh, met a chap at university who uh, was from a small town in Iowa, and uh, he said, you know, you really have to come and see Iowa City. It's a great place to write. And so I rented a small room in a wonderful Victorian house and uh, with no air conditioning, which in the summer is quite brutal. And uh, I wrote all day and I uh, smoked cigars on the porch and I chatted to the neighbors who brought vegetables over for me from their gardens. And I walked around the city at night and I uh, went to libraries and I went to readings and uh, I finished my book and it was just a wonderful city to write in. There's very, there are very few place, places in the world that are interesting but also safe. I think I'm most commonly asked um, uh, how much of my life is in my stories. And uh, certainly uh, I think mm, a lot of my life is in the stories, but I'll never say, you know, what part. Yeah, there is actually, uh, and it's it's uh, appropriate for me to mention her. Her name is Anne Michaels, and she's a Canadian uh, fiction writer and poet. And I first saw her here in Iowa during that summer in my early 20s, when I desperately wanted to write a book and to have a literary life. And I went to see her at Prairie Lights, where I'm reading tonight, and uh, listening to her uh, read from her book, Fugitive Pieces, was a massive influence um, on my own work and uh, and I based on the book and the characters I decided to move to Athens Greece uh, to live for a few years uh, in order to um, to write uh, inspired by um, the story in, in her novel um, I usually write in bed um, uh, because I've, it's a very boring answer, but I found a way to put my power cord through the back of the bed. And um, sometimes I write at a university close to my daughter's school. Uh, you know, any writer that has children will know that, you know, your children have to go to school and you pick them up and you make them lunch. And so you write between those, the hours, you know, of their education and put them to bed and, and then you can work. And so everything changes when you become a parent so, in terms of being a writer. That's a very good question. Noise. Uh, it's very difficult to find a quiet place. Um, of course, you know, being in a tomb would be the best place for me, but, but being in a tomb would probably mean that I'm dead, so it wouldn't be much good. Um, I have noise-cancelling headphones, which I wear over earplugs, and I have a blindfold, which I try to use, but I ended up just typing gibberish. And, uh, you know, I thought if I can reduce the sensory input, it didn't work. I still wear the headphones and the earplugs. But the good thing about writing in bed is not because I'm very, very lazy. I wa was once in, in nicer years, but uh, uh, it's because um, I can fall asleep and drift away into dreams and then wake up and immediately write. And I find writing immediately after I've woken up is the best time. Uh, I go for walks in the country. I cross-country ski, uh, spending time alone, really, um, having a bath. When I put my daughter to bed and I've cleaned up and, and done all my chores and got things laid out for tomorrow, you know, laid out what she's going to wear for tomorrow and set out the breakfast things, you know, I, I have a couple of hours where I can really indulge what I want to do and hopefully not waste time on the internet. shoes and cakes and the word tiny I know because a reader wrote to me and made a list comedy and it's it's uh, I've realized um, that comedy is integral to, to, to good fiction
Well, you know, the, the idea of the Greek, uh, that old Greek tableau of the happy face and the sad face, that their happiness, uh, like uh, joy and, and tragedy, uh, have a mutual dependency. And we can never really know one without the uh, conditions of the other. Oh, for me, yes, absolutely. The best kind of writing is, is spiritual. When somebody asked uh, George Bernard Shaw if he thought the Holy Ghost wrote the Bible, he said, uh, I, th I think the Holy Ghost has written all books, which sounds very hard on the Holy Ghost. But I think he meant that there's some sort of, uh, maybe like Emerson's Oversoul or, uh, you know, Karl Marx's, um, I can't remember his term, but some, some shared consciousness. Um, some higher consciousness. Joseph Campbell, the mythologist, talks about going into St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York and then going back onto Fifth Avenue and going between two different consciousnesses. So for me, I think uh, sleep gets me, sleep and, and, uh, and um, being alone uh, get me into that spiritual realm where I'm able to be a ghost without being dead. I think you can be a writer without actually writing anything at the beginning. Um, I meet young people, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old, and they, they tell me that they feel like writers. The way they interpret the world, the way they dwell on things, the way they, a word can hinge on so much and, or, or hold so much emotion for them. And I, 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 I completely understand what they meant. I felt like I was a writer before I ever started really working at the craft of it. Um, I think a writer is someone who feels a, a real sp a spiritual connection to the way language contains the fabric of our lives, um, but also someone who, and then to realize, your, to realize the worldly uh, uh, side of being a writer, I think requires an incredible devotion to, to study and to craft, and also to trusting yourself and your instincts and not getting too uh, worried or distracted by the business of writing, by the business of marketing. I think writing and publishing and marketing are two very, very different things. And I think it's difficult for young writers who try and merge the two into one career or lifestyle.